verses, so we can just read those six verses. Beginning at verse 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and you will fast like the did anybody get that? He shall arise with healing in his wings. My God. Wow. Verse 3, and ye shall tread down the wicked. They shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. But Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he, he shall, shall turn, turn the hearts, hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we ask that the revelation knowledge will come as we're sharing these truths because we know that when the illumination comes by your spirit, it means more to all of us. So this we ask, oh God, that you'll take the cover off these few words that we speak. Yes, Lord. That we will behold the things that you want us to behold. That we may govern ourselves accordingly. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Notice what he said in, I shall send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. He said, lest I Come, now this is what kind of uh, stood out to me. Lest I come and strike or smite the earth with a curse. And I thought that. Why would this happen? Yes. So I believe that um, two things that I believe he was given to me. And then one is going to share concerning the fathers that are passive. We're trying to interact together but what was coming to me is the whole earth is off centered from God's divine purpose the whole earth yes and so when you see what he said in Malachi I'm sending Malachi the, the, the uh, I'm sending uh, uh, Elijah the prophet and his mission is going to be turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the children's heart to the fathers, lest I, or so that I won't have to curse, have to smite the earth with a curse. Yes, I, I yes. Thought, wow, Lord. So, what was so amazing about that is like, God, this is something important to you. Yes. And then uh, the scripture came to me when Jesus prayed. He said, Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven has a certain, a certain goodness, a certain righteousness, a holiness uh, that the abode of God where God dwells and there's nothing but righteousness. So God intended that the earth be a replica of heaven. Now this is God's doing. 
So when Jesus came several thousand years ago, he said to the children of the kingdom, when they ask him, teach us to pray, mm -hmm. he said, pray this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray this prayer. This is the Father's intent. This is the Father's will. He wants things on the earth to be in order according to God's purpose that he intended when he made the earth. Remember now, in Genesis 1, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Somewhere or another, between verses 1 and 2, something took place because he said, and the earth was without void, um, void and without form and void. Would God make something formless and void? So what happened was, God had a kingdom. He gave Satan he elevated him to a standard, the status, and gave him a kingdom. And Ezekiel talks about that, right? So, but Satan got the wrong idea, and he wanted to be like God. He wanted to exalt his kingdom or his throne above the stars and be like God, right? Yes. So we know that according to history, something took place there. So uh, all of the creation and sciences will agree with us that there was somebody on earth before humans, that as we know it. The fossils prove that, right? All right, even uh, the things that we've never seen with our eyes, like dinosaurs, the fossils tell us that there was something quite different than what we experienced, right? All right, so it's true. Nobody can say, well, that I don't know where they got that from because uh, uh, that's not true. No, it's true. So Satan had a kingdom. Yes. But as he rebelled against God, God had to deal with him, all right? But God dealt with him. He brought him down. And, but Jesus had come back to restore it. Now, I don't want to get too long because I want to uh, give my wife a chance to, to interact. And, uh, but Jesus has a purpose. But before I get to that, God said to Adam, mm -hmm. be fruitful and multiply and... Do what? Subdue. So Subdue so the earth and re create. Say it with me. Replenish. Replenish the earth. You only replenish something that was. Isn't that right? Right. So obviously something took place. All right? You can't replenish something if something was never. Right. Something had to be in order to replenish. Yes. Repopulate, in other words. Yes. So Adam's purpose was to repopulate the earth. Now notice this. You cannot repopulate the earth without a father. That's right. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Because I was saying, God, why would you think in terms of smiting the earth with the curse, just because the fathers and the daughters, uh, or the sons and daughters, there's not that 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 unity in that understanding. You know, I know sin came, but then he began to help me to see it. The fathers repopulate the earth. Yes. Because the seed is in the father. Right. Isn't that right? Yes. Amen. So, in order for God to have a righteous generation a righteous earth the seed had to be righteous that's it all right now now before i uh, okay you you ready to share okay 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 so it is important that's what he said very important to god that his earth be filled with righteousness yes that's okay all right now what happened? Now let me take you back. God created Adam and then Adam had two sons. Adam and Eve. I mean uh, uh, Cain and Abel, right? Yes. Because something happened in the garden 
the serpent beguiled Eve. Now Satan got a foothold where he was not supposed to. So he got into the family and he created murder, right? Yes. Now, now I, this is what I want you to see. Yes, yes, yes. There was Cain and Abel, okay? Cain killed Abel. Well, let me, before, before, before you think about that, the Bible says that it came to pass that Cain offered an offering from the ground. Are you with me? Yes. And Abel offered of the firstling and the fattest of his flock. The next line said, and God had respect to Abel and his offering. And his offering. His offering. Are you with me? Yes. Now this thing did not sit well with Cain. Cain, that was the seed that came that caused him to destroy his brother. I ain't finished, but look what he said. <laughs> so, he got so angry, he killed his brother, and the Bible backs me up that Abel was the righteous seed. Are you with me? So if Abel was killed, and Cain was the only seed who was wicked. He populated the earth with a wicked seed. Yes, he did. Are you with me? Amen. What happened? It was only when Adam had another son that called Seth. And then, of course, through Seth, here is, a, a, the Bible says Adam had another son at, in his own image. Come on, Bible scholars. In his likeness. Yes. What was he saying? It was like what God intended for Adam to be, but Cain, something happened to Cain. He became of the wicked seed. So Adam, until he produced another seed, yes. like Abel, are you with me? Then there was no righteous seed. So the earth became populated with an unrighteous seed. And, and so it came to pass and when God looked upon the earth in Genesis 6 and all the imagination of man's heart was wicked, only evil continually, and it repented God that he made man. That's right. So God had to destroy. That's right. The, the whole of the earth. The only thing was left through the seed of Seth, Shem, or Noah, who was of that righteous seed. Everything was destroyed, right? So God says, okay, I'm going to start all over. I got to have a righteous seed. Yes. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So, destroyed the whole earth. Everything was Adam, I mean, but except Noah. And then Noah got out. And offer up an offering to the Lord. And the Bible says, and God smelled a sweet aroma. Yes. It hadn't happened since the time of Adam. Yes. Because the earth was cleansed of evil. So God starts all over now. He says, okay, be fruitful now. I want you to multiply and replenish the earth. Okay? Now, it was supposed to be, I want you to see how God was laboring to have a righteous seed on the earth. Yes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. in heaven. And so, of course, you know the story over the years how, see, Satan had already become now the God of this age. So he was not about to let this righteous seed dominate in the earth. All right. Now, I'm going to pause. I'm excited, so I'm going to let Yes, um, there's so much, but, but I want you to come in, and we, we said that the earth cannot be repopulated except to the, the fathers. fathers. The fathers must 
be righteous. If the fathers are not righteous, they're going to produce something that's not what God wants. Amen. Are you with me? All right, so you see why God is... So we see that why, when we learn the principles and ways of God, we see that God watches over his word to perform it. And because uh, the, the father's uh, seed was unrighteous, then he, God will always look for someone that will serve and stand in the gap and be the, the, the wound that will perpetrate righteousness. And so it's, so it's so important to see why fathers are so important to God. First, we know that we are, they are made in his image and likeness. God told the fathers to rule and subdue the earth. He didn't tell the mothers. He told the fathers. And, and because of that, they have the great responsibility of teaching and disciplining their seed. Because the seed has to see the pattern of righteousness. So, I want to interject here why it's so important that fathers understand their position and their place and why God made them head, the head, not the tail, but the head of the family. Let's look in second, um, I'm sorry, first Samuel chapter two. And I want to talk about a father. Some of you know who I'm going to, I'm referencing this to. I won't go into the whole uh, story about Hannah, but she desired a man child. She went into the temple to pray, and Eli the prophet was sitting outside the gate, and he questioned her why she was so vexed. Eli, I'm sorry, not Elijah, but Eli the prophet. And so she was so wanting and so giving God her petition that she was just trembling. And so Eli took uh, note of her, and he she said, whatever you request, God going to give you that uh, from the Lord. So she went, over, went her way happy. But we see that in verse tw uh, chapter 2, verse 12 of 1 Samuel, now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hands while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or, or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did and shallow to all the Israelites who came there. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take the boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, they should really burn the fat first, then you may take as much as your heart desire, he would then answer him. No, but you must give it now, and if not, I will take it by force. Now, we know that was not an attitude of a, a priest of God. Therefore, the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord. This is what Eli, uh, Eli's sons did. Um, for men abhor the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child. I'm um, sorry, I don't want to go there. But 
Now the son that the word said that the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. A permissive father. Let me go over to um, chapter four. No, I'm sorry. Um, chapter 2, verse 22. Now, Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meetings. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. And the child's... Um, Yeah, well, I'm a, uh, I don't want to go into Samuel, but the because Eli's sons were um, wicked in the sight of the Lord, but Samuel had the opportunity to correct them and to deal with them, but he didn't. I'm sorry, Eli. Did I? Who do I keep saying? Samuel. Eli wouldn't deal with his sons properly. A permissive father says something like this, whatever you want, talking to his child. But the passive father simply says, whatever. You know, whatever you do, it's okay. You know. He is not really engaged or connected. He watches his children hurt themselves and self-destruct and he doesn't even raise a voice of restraint. That's a passive father. Almighty God put the whole story of Eli and his sons in the Bible for our admonition. Because God have instructed the fathers how to lead and be in charge over their families to teach them the ways of the Lord. Amen? And he, he uh, wanted them instructed so that they could live righteously before God. Amen? So, Let me interject. Yes. Right on the line, what she said is, God looked at a man called Abraham, and God saw that this man would further divine purposes on the earth, right? So he said, uh, when the, the Lord came and a couple of angels said, shall I hide this thing from Abraham, what I'm about to do? Mm -hmm. Seeing that he is going to he will, or whatever he said, for I know him, for he will guide or his household or teach them after him so that I might bring upon Abraham my purpose, that I, which I, I intended. So Abraham, he said, I know him. He'll guide his household. Now this is coming from heaven. God was looking at this man and says, he's going to do right. He's going to teach his, his children the way of the Lord because, see, it doesn't stop at one generation. When you think about God, Jesus came down through 42 generations. So you got to see how God thinks. He doesn't yes. think like us. Yes. We think one generation, if it doesn't happen, we're just all frustrated and, and discombobulated. But what God, God's not like that. That's right. God, he said something about Abraham knowing that generations after generations it would take, but it was very important that the fathers 
continue this righteous seed in order for God to do, oh, you all hear what I'm saying? Do his will. Hallelujah. Amen. God put the story of Eli and his children in the Bible for a purpose. So that we may know what he thinks of passive dads. Because those fathers' wounds run very deep in their children. You know, when a child do something wrong and their uh, fathers don't correct them, it's telling the children that I don't care. That I don't matter. You know, and so they run amok. They get into all, they don't learn boundaries. They don't learn uh, respect, you know, things that would give them favor in life, you know. But um, the wounds that they encounter because of their not being disciplined and instructed causes deep wounds in them. Eli and his worthless sons, worthless means vile, senseless, without value and destitute. Now these are the fruits that can come out of children from passive fathers. Eli was self-indulgent. He was faithful in the house of God. He didn't miss a beat when it came to the things of God. Uh, and that's all good. While his sons were stealing a substantive portions from the people's offering, for themselves, and Eli the priest allowed this to go on. He didn't bother addressing it. That's like seeing your child run out in front of a car and you don't try to stop him. Eli uh, knew better. He, he would care for the others, and if that get into the story about Hannah, he was so attentive to Hannah. Hannah gave her son back to God, and Eli became his mentor. And Eli did for Samuel what he should have done for his own sons. You know, sometimes we, as uh, people of God, we can help everybody else, but our household go amok. And so that doesn't please God. Eli, he, he could see himself caring for others. He could pass the people, just not his own family. And that was assessed. Eli issued no discipline. He took no responsibility. His son suffered the consequences. And we'll find out in chapter 22 what happened to them. Um, they lost their lives. You know, God will let things go on for a period of time, but then at appointed time, if you don't change, he's going to deal with it. Those with passive fathers, with passive father wounds, wonder, am I loved? Do I matter? And then you find people trying to prove their significance because of Pastor fathers, you know, they, they don't set a, a pattern for them. They set a pattern, but it's not the pattern that God want them to have. Amen. So, pastor fathers, God look at it in an unfavorable way because he have instructed us through his word, through um, his prophets, you know, through our righteous leaders, the pattern. And he's given, he given us wisdom, how to instruct and teach our children. He instructed Moses how to uh, uh, teach Israel how to live a righteous life. So God in our day is wanting us Wanting the fathers not to be so passive. You know, there's no restraint in our earth. Any imagination of the heart, if a person can think it, they'll do it. There's no boundaries for right and wrong. 
and that doesn't please God. And that's why he said in Malachi, uh, Elijah the prophet would come and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children mm -hmm. and children to the fathers because if you look at our generation, mm -hmm. the generation of Sorry, to the neglect mm -hmm. of their firstborn. Mm -hmm. And according to the Bible, the firstborn have the rights and privileges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got it all twisted up. Mm -hmm. And don't think that it doesn't matter that your father is not in your life. Mm -hmm. It does matter. It matters to God. Because we know about patterns. And we know why God destroyed a whole world of people. Through the flood. Through, um, because the patterns of unrighteousness and people became very wicked as uh, the apostle was saying earlier and so God looked at them it was no restraint no repentance no remorse for the things they did so God had to wipe out that whole generation amen and then when uh, we were talking earlier when um, Moses came on the sea to deliver the uh, children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. When they crossed over, he had gave them a set of laws to cause them to be righteous unto him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, and, go ahead. So God was laboring to keep this righteousness on the earth. And uh, I was thinking about how when God made everything that he had made, he made everything to uh, produce after its kind. Yes. So you look at all the things that he made and he said after his kind. Yes. After his kind. Everything we're producing after his kind. And after he said all that, then he said, now let us make man in our, our image. image. Basically what he was saying, we are producing man after his kind. All the cattle, everything that bears seed or children, it produces after its kind. You take an apple tree and it, it, the seed is in the apple, right? Yes. And that apple seed, if it is planted, it will produce a tree exactly like it. Isn't that right? So every, this is how God made it. everything produce after its kind. But then when he got to man, he said, now let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God intended man to be like him, yes. a reproduction of himself. And so that process was to go on. So every, um, and so man was to be righteous. So he was to produce righteous seed, righteous seed, righteous seed, generation after generation so that God could uh, uh, do what he wanted to do on earth. But you know that it didn't happen. So I'm going to take you back right fast here, and then we're going to, and, and after one finish, we, we're going to be done. It's very important to God that his earth be filled with righteousness. Yeah. Okay? Since the, the Cain, the unrighteous seed, filled the earth, populated the earth with, with, with wickedness, then God destroyed them, right? Through the flood. All right? Then, uh, after he came and started with Noah again to repopulate the earth again, later on, Sodom and Gomorrah. He had to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And then time goes on and God would 
pleading through the prophets and nation after nation. Yeah. God's still laboring to get this. This is what I like. This is who I am. This earth has got to be. But, but uh, time went on. And then finally, 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 God sends his own son. Yes. Yeah. And his son now was to come and restore things back as the father intended in the beginning. Are you with me? And so now he encourages us, get them, bring in the harvest, tell them about my love because the day is coming when there will be a final judgment and when God will destroy once more everything that is not righteous. Yes. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Because God will have a righteous seed on the earth. Yes. That's what I want you to see how important it is in God's eyes. Yes. Every family, every headship in the family yes. must produce righteousness are you hearing what I'm saying this is how God and see when we when everything in us understand that and will move toward that goal then we are joining in with God and he joins in with us to perform his will through us are you with me yes. so now and so, and so it's, it, it's so important because if by chance I have another goal in mind. Somewhere or another it's going to start clashing with the mind and will of God for my life. And sooner or later if I don't get it and understand God's purpose as a Christian. It yes. shortens my days. Yes. Let me tell you what a person told me. years ago this person looked at me and says I'm going to be rich but he said it like nothing is going to stop me but when I heard it my heart sank because this was a man of God I am not cursing riches, but I'm trying to show you something. Yes. Paul said to Timothy, if riches it. increase, don't set your heart on it. That's it. Then he said, we bought nothing into this world. And it is certain we're not going to take anything with us. All right. Are y'all with me? Come on now. If I'm out of the Bible, then say, okay, Pastor, you're wrong. So he says, Riches make themselves have wings. That's right. Fly away. They fly away. Could you understand that people can chase after the wind? Yes. But he that doeth the will of God. Yes. Same shall be saved. Yes. For we bought nothing into this world. I hope I ain't. If, if I'm stepping on anybody's toes, at least let me get outside before. You know. <laughs> we bought nothing into this world. And it is certain there'll be no U haul behind our. It's so important to understand that God has made provisions for us. Now, everything God did when he delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, when he was establishing the tabernacle, he didn't use no cheap stuff. He used the best of the best. Yes. And so we're not saying, we're saying don't put your heart on these things. That's right. 
Don't go after it. <laughs> Don't run after it. Don't put your whole life in pursuing riches. Pursue God to have all the riches and let him add it to your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because look, once we leave here, yes. we ain't taking nothing with us. Yes, yes. And let me interject here also. Now, the Lord said something in, in Deuteronomy 8. Um, he said, it is he, God, yes. that gives the power to get wealth. To get wealth. So that you can go and build your home way overseas and, and enjoy the rest of your days. <laughs> Isn't that what the Bible says? No, it doesn't. That he might establish Establish. His covenant. Yes. Everything has got to be about the will of God. Somebody yes. say the will of God. Amen. That's why I appreciate. I don't want to call no name. Some, some right in the midst of us. You, God has blessed you, but you know how to sow. Yes. And God will continue to bless you because you have the right idea. Yes. You, you, you don't let it stop here. And, and one preacher got, he got so zealous and he was so tired of poverty. He said, Lord. Why don't you bless your people? Why? I don't understand, God. These are your people. God said, well, part of the problem is when I bless them, they let it stop right there. They won't give. That's right. And he said, I can't bless them because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Please don't throw stones, Mike. I love you. And, the, uh, the, and what I want to interject here is that when we, we die, we can't take anything over. Yeah. But the blessings don't stop yeah. because we die. Yes. God has something prepared for us in heaven yeah. <laughs> that nothing on earth can compare with. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we haven't lost anything. Hallelujah. We, are, we die to live mm -hmm. yes. again. Yes. With all the blessings and all the things that we desired in our heart when we were here. And if we didn't receive it, we're going to get it on the other side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard uh, Houses and mansions. Now, Jesus said that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He said, in my father's house mm -hmm. are many mansions. Mm -hmm. Many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it was not so, I would not tell you. Mm -hmm. And I go mm -hmm. to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have nothing to lose. And, and, and I, you know, but all to gain. I want to share too. Uh, you know, somebody may be saying, Okay, now preacher, you here you preaching this here, but you got this nice car, these nice cars, and so you you don't believe what you mean. Yes, I do. Let me do what God said. God said to me, when I was, I stepped out full time. Family suffered. Called me off my job. Saw things go on. The lights turned, the water turned off. You name it. I done been through all of that. To, the devil was trying me to see if I was going to still serve the Lord faithful. But my heart was fixed. My mind was made up. Now the Lord said this. There's no man that left houses and land and fathers and mothers in this life except he will in this life receive a hundredfold in this life with persecution. You, I said, well, what is that? Somebody ain't gonna never understand when you get blessed. They're gonna always talk about you. They talk about you when you're poor and you ain't got nothing and they're gonna talk about you when you got something. Y'all gotta hear what I'm saying. That's just the nature of people. So God said you're gonna get it, but you're gonna be persecuted when you get it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
I tell you, I, when I had my little Chevette, they, they, they had an accident, and, and I'm driving around with a little beat-up Chevette, so, and one, one, one person said, I want my pastor riding around here with an old beat-up car. So I understand. But then when I got my... <laughs> when I got my good car, they, they couldn't figure out, well, he thinks he's something. I said, wait, wait a minute now. <laughs> I discovered you just got to do what you got to do. Isn't that right? <laughs> but let me share this and then I'm done. I'm sure this and I'm done. I, I, a good friend of mine, he was talking, he was praying, really pressing into God. And he, and he had this vision. And he said he was going and he was just go, pursuing God and, 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 and the, fruits were, he, the fruits was manifesting. And as he kept pursuing and going, all of a sudden, he looked behind him and there were just the blessings and things were just following him. And he couldn't figure out why. He said, the Lord says, as you pursue my work, the blessings will follow you. And you see, that's the way it works, somebody. Yes. You, you can't pursue the things and expect them to follow you. You have to, I'm talking to somebody here today. Pursue the kingdom. And, and, and look, don't, 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 when you pursue the kingdom, don't have, don't be like this. Now I'm going to the kingdom because I need this. No, 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 your, now your motive got to be right. Isn't that right? Look at somebody say, now your motive got to be right when you're doing this. Because you can't be deceiving the Lord. <laughs> But mean what? When you go after God, let your heart be sold out to God. Yeah. Don't worry about the things of this life. And before you know it, they'll just keep following you. They'll follow you. Why? Because God promised in his word. And he's faithful to his covenant. I love the Lord. I'm so excited about the Lord. He's so good. I'm just, and I said I was going to stop. Him. But listen. <laughs> my house over there and I'm doing good on Scarlet Oak Court and you know, so I'm going to give you another home. I say, but Lord, I got a home. He didn't say nothing. And I didn't know that Betty was going to pass and all this here. So God, after I got married, he said, I want to give me a new home. So I was like, okay, Lord, now I'm about 60. <laughs> I don't make a whole lot of money. So, Lord, I, I, I can't. I don't know about a 30-year mortgage. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm computing now. I'm like, wait a minute now. I, God, I, I, you know, I trust you, but I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to do that. But I understood something. I know that when God want to bless you, you're not being spiritual by saying you don't need to bless me. <laughs> you're not being spiritual, isn't that right? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know, when God gives you a word, it's settled. There's no varying, you know, no giving in and taking it back. It's not predicated on your circumstances mm -hmm. or your situation. Mm -hmm. Now, while before we got married, the Lord had told me. I ain't had no husband. I was in a house. I ain't had no money. And my children, one would work and the other one would lose his job. And so the situation, but the Lord in the midst of all of that spoke to my heart and said, I'm going to bless you uh -huh. with a new house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what I said? Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I said, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. I'm not going to question how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. I won't thinking about getting married. And I said, Lord, I receive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we leave the results up to God. Yes, 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 yes. And he'll work it after the counsel of his own will. Amen. We don't yes. have nothing to do with it. Yes. But thank him. And he will bring it to pass. Then you know what what just uh, what the Lord just said to me. I was saying, well, no, Lord, why are we going here? 
talking about the houses and stuff. But the Lord says he's going to give some people here some new homes. Hallelujah. So I, Hallelujah. While I was standing over there, he said, I want to give people some new homes. And uh, so I'm just giving that out. I ain't, don't you. He worked that out. You know what they did. And God is good. And uh, another thing, too, that uh, the Lord said while we were over that the FOE building, he said he's going to bless his people with well-paying jobs. Now, listen, I believe what God tell me. I may get a little impatient, but I believe what he tell me. God said, I'm going to bless my people with well-paying jobs. And then he said, some are going to start small businesses. That's what God said. God is a covenant-keeping God. He's faithful. You cannot be faithful to God and he not be faithful to you. Speak in the mic. Speak in the mic. I'm going to speak in the mic. <laughs> so, as the head so is the body. Amen. Can't bless the head Amen. and don't bless the body. Amen. 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 That's a principle. Come on, let's give God some Hallelujah. praise in the house. Let's stand and give God praise some praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him for what he's going to do for you right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, you're a covenant keeping God. You can do exactly what you said. Hallelujah. There ain't nobody going to serve you faithfully and be disappointed. For God is faithful in all of his ways. Shout with a voice of triumph, somebody. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And once the God begin to bless you for, it just keeps on. It just keeps on going. I, I can't explain. All I can tell you is that God is faithful. Yes. He's faithful. When I got home, got, got there in that new home there, and it was much bigger than I had planned, but it was what God had. He told us to go down to Carrollton. We had looked before, and I'm sharing this because God's getting ready to bless some people. I don't know who you are with this here. You've been faithful, but I'm dishing it out. Got there, and then the Lord, I'm here. I was on a four-day fast, and I'm praising God and seeking, seeking God for spiritual breakthroughs. Then all of a sudden, God said, I want you to go down to the Mercedes place. And I'm, no, Lord, you know, I know how that sounds. Like, you know. But again, if you want to bless you, trust me, you're not being spiritual by turning it down. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. God is in the blessing business. And, and so what God is doing is like once the riches increase, he said, now, I've Don't. taught you, you know not to set your heart on it. Right. You know not to get a big head. Isn't that right? That's right. Be faithful to God, hallelujah, because God is faithful. Somebody's about to get some homes. I just feel that thing in my hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard mother, one of the mothers that used to be with us, she's passed on, and she wasn't given to a whole lot of visions and revelations. And she spoke to me years ago. She said, oh, Pastor Herring, I see the living word. These people are so blessed and prosperous. She said, these people got these meat stoves and all this. And she says, she says, I don't know, but she said, God showed this to me. And said, they're so beast. They're just wealthy people. I said, uh, is that going to get another congregation? You know, so she said, <laughs> But the Lord said, he's a faithful God. Yes. I want you to be encouraged, saints. That you can't serve God and God not reward you. It's a simple thing for God. You remember before he took Egypt, took the children of Israel from Egypt, he blessed them. Yes, he did. I mean, he blessed them. Hallelujah. Is that enough, y'all? All right, that's enough. I'm going to leave it alone. Come on, let's give God praise for his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I want to say this. In regard to fathers, if your father hasn't been in your life, 
if your mom wasn't in your life, if you've been through abusive situations as a result of the father not being there, God has raised this ministry up for the brokenhearted. And he want to bring restoration to the hearts of his people. For this is the reason why we were raised up. It was not our idea, but it's God's idea. He want to bring restoration, and he wants your seed to be a righteous seed. And then he want to prosper your way. Hallelujah. And all these other things shall be added unto you. That's the restoration that Jesus want to bring to his body. Not only living word, but the body of Christ. Amen. He want to raise up men that will take charge, that will be examples and patterns for the younger generation. They got to see it to know how to walk in it. Oh! Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Can I share a little testimony? The Lord, this is personal, but I'll share it. I was sitting down, my husband and I were in prayer, and he had to, he got up to do some something, and you know, I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the Lord reminded me the kind of husband that he had blessed me with. See, a lot of people look at my husband and think that he's a pushover, or he's easy, or he's, um, you know, they, they think that, you know, he's passive. He is so far from that. And I thank God, because when I married this man, the Lord, we, when we had disagreements, and I was in my own little way, and um, he would, when I ca would come back home after being mad, blowing up, and come back home. Now, y'all, the pastors don't act like that. But, uh, and I'll come back home, and he would sit me down, and he'll tell me what he won't have. And he defined his role. In, in my home. And I can thank God for this man for being an example of what a man's supposed to be in his home. Amen. And I, I and I, I know in the beginning I must I was a mess because my first husband was he let me do what I want to do. You you know, he, he just let me I go and Come when I want to, do what I wanted to do, but that was different. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> She's telling our secrets here now, but anyway. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. We thank the Lord for his mercy. We thank God for the grace of God that's on our lives. And uh, Father, we, we just want to thank you for today. You're such a great God. You're so wonderful, Lord. We, we thank you for how you raise us up and you, put your spirit in us. Yes, Lord. Your eternal truths, Lord, for us to live by. You establish our hearts for your own purpose. That the word of God may be in us. Yes cause us to prosper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you do. Every ounce of praise. Yes.
when we didn't feel like we want to be kept. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. All of our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. So therefore, I give you glory. And I give you honor for anything that's said about me, Lord. You know the deal. So you be praised. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen.